In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My friends, the grace and the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. And Good evening, everyone. Good evening, God. My name is Father Paul, and uh, I am assisting at uh, St. Anne in the Barry. I've been there for nine months. And speaking of nine months, I have a niece who is having her fourth child. <laughs> and the child is due any day. Now, I'll tell you, she has twins who are three years old, a boy and a girl. She has a little boy who is one year and two months, and now she is having number four. So, uh, and they're all, they're all gonna be under four years of age, can you imagine? I can't, that's, that's another story. So my friends, we gather our thoughts together this evening. We now ask the Lord for forgiveness for our sins and our offenses. I confess, Almighty so God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
friends, let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, I must denounce him. All those who were my friends are now on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor, from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
St. Paul to the Romans, brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin death, and thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to that time of the law, sin was in the world, and sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who do, did not sin, after the pattern and the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by transgression of the one of many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? <coughs> Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good evening again, everyone. Good evening. 
You have two wonderful priests here who I know, Father Frank and Father Kenny, and you also have an excellent cantor. I told him before I may steal them away. But I'm a very good man, I wouldn't do such a thing, and I'm not the pastor, so that's even better. But this is what church is about, coming together as God's people, worshiping with each other, paying attention to what's going on, and understand the spirit of the liturgy and the fact that the spirit of God is within each one of you. I'm going to begin with a story because a lot of the gospel and what we hear and read and what we see and hear in our society these days is about fear and also about anger. The story is about an elderly woman who had worked all her life as a seamstress. And finally, she saved enough money to fulfill her wish to visit the Holy Land. She had never flown before and was very much afraid. Even the presence of four bishops on the plane did little to calm her. Only after the jet had reached altitude and was making its way over the ocean, did the woman dare to open her eyes and peer out the window? Just at that moment, one of the plane's engines broke loose from its bearings and disappeared downward. We're all going to die, she shouted. In an effort to calm her and avoid panic on the plane, the flight attendant assured the frightened woman that everything was under control and that the pilot could fly back to New York and land safely with three engines. But the woman continued to cry out, we're going to die. Again, the attendant assured her, don't worry, God is with us. We have only three engines, but look, we have four bishops. To that, the woman quickly replied, I'd rather have four in engines than three bishops. <laughs> well, you know, it's very interesting to read a story like that. I've traveled quite a bit in my life, and oftentimes what I simply do is say a prayer that we land safely. And because recently I almost went to God myself, I've come to a certain understanding of having a real positive attitude about what life is about, about our relationship to each other, and especially our relationship to God. Now, what underlies our reading is always uh, a question. And if you read the book of Jeremiah, right in chapter one, they have the call of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah answers to Yahweh, basically, I'm young, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't want to do this. And then as you go on, you see what happens. So in chapter one, Yahweh says, have no fear before them, that is your fellow man, because I am with you to deliver you. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you. For I am with you to deliver you. And then in today's reading, we see Jeremiah very distraught, in pain in many, many ways, I think psychologically and spiritually, paranoid. I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side, denounce, let us denounce him. And it goes on until you read the following. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. Now that's what it is all about. This incredible faith in God that really takes over your whole spirit. You know, we're living in very difficult times. You know that as well as I do. And I'm at the point where I hardly watch any news because it's the same old thing. 
I mean, you know, you see people jumping up and down and screaming, and there's so much anger, but I've come to understand also through counseling, through working with many people, that anger and this deep anger and hatred is like a great sin. It's a cancer of the soul. Think of times when you've really felt hate. What happens? Your blood pressure goes up, your face turns red. You know, I watch this stuff on television and truly I have to turn it off. I can't bear to hear the profanity like there was no tomorrow, the trashing of things, people going wild. This is not the America I grew up in. This is not in the, the America that I truly understand in many ways, but I realize that there is a lot of work to be done in this world and a lot of great work. Why? Because we are a great and we are a very generous nation. Now, let me look for a minute at fear. We all know what fear is. We experience it and we encounter it. And we certainly know anger. And we know that anger arises out of fear. But I find also that if you're a person of fear and you're a person that's angry, you're also paralyzed in many ways. You're paralyzed in your spiritual growth, but you also have to realize that fear can be valuable because it perhaps served as a signal of impending danger. And look at the past few years from 9-11 on. Look at what's going on in Europe now. I heard a statement the other day about the United States and different groups that have gathered here. Well, we have to live our lives. We have to raise our children. I have to spread the word of the Lord Jesus. I have to do all that I can as a Catholic priest to serve my people. And no matter what parish I'm in, or if I go to J.C. Penney, I always try to spread good cheer and good word. I'll, I said to a lady the other day, believe it or not, I had to buy kitchen curtains. Now, what do I know about kitchen curtains? It's not very much. And she was great. So at the end of it, I said, I'd like to talk to your boss. And she says, well, my boss is the manager. Get your boss in here. And the boss came and I said, you have a great employee. I, for many years, was a banker, and I worked with great people, and that's very, very important. I said, she's the keeper, give her a raise. <laughs> that, that, that takes nerve, but you know what? You get to this age, and you go, what the heck? Just get it out, you know? Uh, somebody said to me years ago, uh, I think you should be a bishop, and my response to that was, I was a bishop in the bank, I've had enough of that. And besides that, <laughs> I have too many sins. <laughs> you know, I mean, come on, we're all sinners, everybody sins, and I don't stress that. But we have to understand that we sin. But I'll tell you something, with all the confessions that I've heard over the years, People are so good. Maybe there's one to two percent that have done really terrible things, but overall, I think you could name you could name the sins. Even the little ones. I hit my dog. One said to me once. He said, "I said a bad word," and I I asked him what the word was, and he told me, and. Um, I laughed, I said, oh, I have to tell, tell you this, now don't tell anybody, but I use that word sometimes a lot. And he said, so the mother comes in and she said, Father, did he tell you that special word? I said, seal the confession. <laughs> there you go. So one of my fears as a little boy was the boogeyman. How many of you remember the boogeyman? How many of you would look under your bed before. There you go. Every night I would get up and I would look at the under the bed to see if there was a boogeyman there. 
Now, you know, I just thought of that this past week. I thought of the boogeyman because all I have under my bed are rolled up rugs and uh, no boogeyman can fit there. But that was a fear as a child. You know, we all have our fear. John Paul II, St. Paul, John, uh, Paul, Saint John Paul II, I have to get used to that, says, have no fear. President Roosevelt said at the beginning of World War II, there is nothing to fear but fear. Thank you. Thank you. We're all showing our age. But there is nothing. <laughs> there is nothing. I, I wasn't born when he was president. I came after the following guy who I like very much. There is nothing to fear but fear itself. But what do we fear? We fear something. Sometimes we fear people. Sometimes we uh, fear an event. I was once invited when, when I was in banking to give a talk on the Japanese economy, but they told me I would just answer questions. Well, I got to this place where I was, you know, going to answer questions, and the woman came up to me and said, um, Mr. Walkovitz, uh, are you ready for your, your presentation? And I said, what presentation? And she says, oh, you have to talk for 15 minutes and then there's going to be questions. Well, I immediately, I remember it to this very day, I thought to myself, should I just leave? <laughs> should I faint? Should I throw up? I mean, all of these things. I got up there and I'll tell you truthfully, thank God I was young, I made a fool out of myself. But you know what? Never got invited back, but they gave me a nice check and I said, arrivederci. And that was that. <laughs> So I'm going to conclude with this. I'm going to ask you to ponder several questions. Examine your own fears. What are you afraid of? Scripture repeats over and over and over, have no fear. Do you know that that's in Scripture 365 times on every day of the year? 365 times, have no fear. What fear limits your efforts in life? Just do it. I taught for a number of years, and students would come in and say, oh, Father Paul, my family can't afford that. I said, no, you gotta try. You'll get a scholarship. You know, I went to college, it took me nine years. I had no money. I worked my way through college. It happened to be Harvard. They were very generous to me. I said, look, if I can do it, Anybody can do it, but you have to try and take no for an answer. I became a priest. That was the biggest surprise of all to everybody. Number three, what does Jesus say to these fears? Think about it. What does the Lord who is with you at all times say? You can wake up at 2.13 in the morning, which I do about 10 times a night, and talk to God and say, I know I have to stop drinking water, so please help me out with that. <laughs> I'm going to close with a wonderful quote, if I have it here. This is from Mahatma Gandhi. Let our first act every morning be to make the following resolve for the day. I shall not fear anyone on earth. I shall fear only God. I shall not bear Ill will, Ill will toward anyone. I shall not submit to injustice. I shall conquer untruth by truth. And in resisting untruth, I shall put up with all suffering. What wonderful words, what wonderful resolutions. So I know that all of you will, you know, wake up tomorrow morning and go to bed at night. People say to me, oh, Father, I go to bed and I'm tired. You know what? Say three words, thank you, God. Thank you, God, and go to sleep. You'll sleep very well. You may snore, but you'll sleep very well. God bless you.
Please stand and let us together make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things physical and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Is there a book of intercessions for the priest? Christ's disciples, let us confidently approach the Father with our petitions. For all the members of the church, may we testify to the truth of Christ and the salvation which he has won for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who govern, that they may hear the cries of the poor and protect the least among us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all missionaries who risk their lives in service to the gospel, may they be emboldened through the courage and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who teach religious education and sacramental preparation in our parish, may they help children to grow in his wisdom, knowledge, and faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our parish community, that they may welcome those whom the Lord is calling to join us as followers of Christ and faithful children of the Holy Mary, Holy Mother, Holy Mother Church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the increase of worthy vocations to the sacred priesthood, consecrated life, and the permanent diaconate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our beloved dead and all those who have died, that they may find eternal rest in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And we mention in a special way Barbara Grimhall, James, and Teresa Fox, for whom this Mass is offered. For them we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Gracious Lord, in your great mercy, turn toward us, and in your great love, answer us according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Our gift bearers today are Evelyn Herbert and Anna Hoff. Our second collection is Capital Main.
pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of the same, for our good and the good of all the church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of the heart pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed humankind in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. <laughs> He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. Remember also our sisters and our brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and Bishop and Martyr. It's not St. Irenaeus. <laughs> oh, let's just say the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> Sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
before we conclude, I want to leave you with a story that I was thinking of as, as uh, I was giving out communion. You know how things float in your mind? And I want to leave you with a good smile. When I was in Rome as a student, uh, I got on the subway and I had all my religious stuff on. And there was a couple standing there and I overheard them. And they were from the South, very deep accent. Well, they obviously were going to the Vatican stopped before the Vatican, the train stopped, and everybody got off. So I went up to them and I said, oh, we have to get off here. So we walked out and I said, are you going to the Vatican? And they said, yes. I walked over with them and I showed them this and I showed them that. And uh, they looked at me and they said, well, Father, thank you very much. She says, by the way, she says, for an Italian, you have the best American accent. <laughs> Let us pray. that you got a laugh. <laughs> Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Can you open the inside back cover of your music hymnal? And together we pray the angels' prayer. It's a get-together of all the views from different, many, many parts of the country. And this is done in different parts of the country, but this time it's going to be hosted here in Orlando. And as we normally do, we send our youth representatives there. And we have Jeremiah who's going to come over and, uh, and tell us more about it and invite the other kids. And maybe you'll be able to support them in this wonderful experience that they're going to attend. Thank you, Father, for the chance to speak. I would also like to thank all who have supported the youth group fundraisers who have, or who have donated money. Today, I'm here to ask. Today, I'm here to ask everybody's support, both spiritually and monetarily, so that our youth can have the chance to experience a weekend of not only fun but of spiritual growth. I will be arriving five days earlier since I am a part of We which is an acronym that stands for Leadership, Evangelism, and Discipleship. During LEAD, we are preparing to take on the challenge of evangelizing and developing leaderships and, and not to mention the bonus of growing in our faith. This year we have 11 youth, 2 young adults, 4 chaperones, and Father Kenny going with us. Each ticket costs $300, but since I'm actually going to lead, it's an additional 365, I mean 95, sorry, for me. The youth could really use your, could really use your help, and anything you can give, we will definitely take. <laughs> but if you would prefer to get something out of it, you're selling dessert at the fish fry after mass. <laughs> And we are also selling cat killer after, ma after each mass outside the door. And also we are selling a raffle ticket that costs $5 for a chance to win a $200 or 
as by gift card. But if all else fails, we'd appreciate it if you would pray for us, especially me, as I accept this challenge. Thank you very much, and God bless. Thank you, Jeremiah. No relations to the first reading. <laughs> uh, but it's a wonderful experience you're going to have. So next week, I'm going to miss you all. I will not be here for the weekend because I'm going to join them. And the wonderful thing about this, and this is one thing that's why I, I was so fortunate to be able to be invited and be able to give it a chance to be part of this for this first time. Because I heard there's so many youth to go to confession. There's just so many of them. So they invited us priests to go there. I'll sign up for three uh, time, at, uh, times for confession on Friday at uh, 4.30 to 6.30, then in the evening from 9.30 to 12 midnight, and then on Saturday again from 12.30 to 2.30. And it's, they're coming, you know, they're, it's a wonderful experience. So please support them uh, by your prayers and by your donation. And I'm sure they're going to be praying for you and all those wonderful spiritual experiences that they would have during those times. And I um, also would like to invite you to our chicken wings and fish fry. Uh, pardon me if I smell like chicken today. Uh, I didn't wash anymore. I just grabbed this and, and come over here. So we will see you there after Mass and uh, whatever you can give us to support the youth would be given to them. So see us for fish fry and chicken wings. Um, I would also would like to invite you all to the Blessed Sacrament Chapel since I think this would be our, since Monday, last week, we already have uh, full access to the Adoration Chapel that you can just punch in the key codes and you can come in there anytime you like. So uh, if you're interested, please check all the, uh, no, be, be in the office. Uh, he has to get it in person, the number, okay? So uh, there's a wonderful uh, devotion that we would like to promote, the Adoration Chapel. Now, we would like to take care of your health. We want you to be, and especially this time of the year, a lot of people are sick, some people are thinking about losing weight and things like that. We want to help you, and there's a free seminar, especially those dealing with diabetes. So type 2 diabetes class will be offered to West Volusia residents that will be presented on Saturday, July 15th from 8 o'clock in the morning to 2 o'clock in the afternoon at the social hall. So that's a free seminar. And that's not the end of it. It's another more. Free breakfast and lunch. <laughs> With less sugar. Oh. You want to make sure less sugar, low glycemic lunch and dinner. Oh no, lunch and breakfast. So please come and, and join us. This is a project of the St. Vincent de Paul and also the uh, the Hispanic uh, Community Health Initiative. So uh, please join them for that. And also, if you want to save live lives, uh, there's the red bus uh, coming in on. July 2nd, that would be next, uh, that would be next Sunday. Sunday. Yep, Sat July 2nd, from 8.30 in the morning to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So please register if you want to come and, and, uh, and donate blood for that. Our parish office will be closed on Tuesday, 4th of July. And I am so proud to announce to you your elected representative for the pastoral council. You know, last week we had our election. Out of the four names, you selected two from those. And I would like to ask them to please stand so that they may know and recognize you. These are your representatives. Miss Tracy Bolton. Oh. And Miss Janine Diagostini. Congratulations and thank you for all the nominees. I know you trusted them. That's why they were nominated. And I wish to thank them for agreeing to be part of those that will be selected for the Pastoral Council. 
Thank you, and um, soon we will announce the inauguration uh, for our uh, new members. We will have a ball, probably. So. But thank you again, and uh, welcome. May we request our communion ministers to the sick to come forward. My dear sister, you are sent from this assembly to bring the word of God and the bread of life to the sick and homebound. Assure them the purse and support of this community and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the final lesson. I'd like to thank all of you and Father Kenny for having me here this evening. Uh, you're a wonderful parish, very exciting, and as you just heard, a lot going on, and that also is what the church is. That's what evangelization is. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And my friends, our Mass is ended. Go in peace and in love to serve the Lord and to serve one another. Thanks, Thanks to God. God. I'll see you over at the fish fry. <laughs>